My name is Jeff Morgan. I'm from Dallas, Texas, and today I'm in Lubbock, and I'm here with Madison Luscombe. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, so Madison, tell me about yourself. I'd, I'd like to talk a little bit more with you about a few things, but first tell us a little bit about, about yourself. Um, well, I guess I, I don't know where I should start with that. Um, I am a mom to two boys. Okay. I um, am married, and um, my mom is Jennifer Reed. Um, and yeah, I live here in Lubbock with um, my husband and kids and work a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. So you mentioned your mom is Jennifer Reed and that's part of the reason that I'm here right now is because we're approaching the one year, I don't want to call it an anniversary because usually anniversaries are something joyful, but the one year mark of the tragedy that took place in Lubbock. Um, and, that, and that was with regard to your mom and also with her husband, Chad. Um, I remember hearing about that, reading it, I saw the video that came out, uh, I followed it for a bit, I was shocked that nothing further happened. But you were here, you saw what took place, can I get your perspective on everything that took place at that time? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely so much of it's hard to even remember everything that took place because right. was, there was so much that happened um but you know from i i didn't i wasn't there i didn't experience the actual events right um but i did uh receive the i was one of the first ones on the scene after um chad was uh shot and killed and so um i you know i can follow everything that happens after that. And, you know, it, it was a lot of, of waiting and being disappointed. Um, I, and I think that's really the only way to explain what happens is waiting and mm -hmm. then being disappointed by, by the outcome. Can you give us a little bit more details about that? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, to start, um, there was, because there was no arrest made on um, the day that he was shot, uh, That's something that we'll have to discuss a little bit. Yeah, um, but because there was no arrest made, they were not, the journalists were not legally, or I guess not necessarily legally, they could legally do whatever they wanted, but by um, definition or by respect, they are not allowed to name um, the person who committed um, the murder. <laughs> I Look, can't say I, that. no, you <laughs> can't say that. Yeah. But I can. Like I said, I saw it. And by the way, and because I may have skipped a couple of things here, um, Chad was killed by a person, and I don't know whether I should mention his name or not. But I'm not going to mention it at this point anyway. During a child custody ex exchange, he was going to pick up uh, was both sons, wasn't it? He was trying to locate Colton, okay. um, his youngest son. Okay. And that was where he stopped to see if. Uh, Colton was there. Right. Um, was on the way to pick Brady up from high school, so he, it was on the way to the high school. Um, okay. And it, it was the office of his ex-wife, who was supposed to have custody of their child at that time, or was understood to have the custody of the child, or not necessarily custody, but she was supposed to have Colton with her to um, give him to yes. Yeah. Um, because he had been taken to the doctor. So right. it was understood that um, she had Colton with her. And so um, when Chad was trying to get Colton to take him home um, for the weekend, it was an argument and it was, well, you can, you can get him from me at the house after six. And, and so, you know, there was never a clarification on um, when Chad, where Chad could pick Colton up at the designated time that he was supposed to be given custody of Colton. Right, because my understanding is, if I remember read the video, he was supposed to be given Colton at 3.15. Whenever school's released. Whenever school was released. And the mom was saying at that time, I'm not going to give him to you until later, or something along these lines. And I think, judging from what I saw, it appeared that this had not been a first time event that had happened like that. Is that correct? Um, I obviously was not involved in a lot right. of the uh, relationship um, that happened and conspired throughout that time. So I can only speak to um, what I heard through the months that my um, that I was near Chad. Mm -hmm. And I know that there were a ton of issues with um, the kids. It was just always an argument. And um, I mean, it, literally anything that involved the kids, there was an argument. So whether it was the clothes that they had at, at, at each house or, 
their medications or, you know, who had who when or could they stay extra or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It, it was an all, all an argument. There was obviously a lot of tension and obviously a lot of resentment um, throughout the whole relationship. So it sounds to me from what I've heard and uh, is that the, the mother was basically almost in a sense controlling the kids maybe to get back it at Chad or I mean everything is speculation right from your perspective I mean at it, this point. exactly I, and all I know is is that from my understanding of their relationship as you know parents um, divorced parents outside of Chad's relationship with my mom is mm -hmm. that everything was fine mm -hmm. um, and you know that that Chad was always given the kids whenever uh, she was out of town it was never there was never a disagreement they spent holidays together so, you know, you can only come to a conclusion that there must have been um, some anger from her towards Chad for the relationship that he had started outside of their divorced relationship. Right. I don't, and it's not like they had just recently divorced either. Right. It had been a number of years or four years or... Yeah, I, I can't remember. There were a lot of things that happened outside of their marriage that... Um, led to, I think, what happened that day. So when you talk about you knew Chad afterwards and everything, tell me what your perspective of Chad is. What was he like? Um, I mean, Chad was, he, first of all, loved my mother. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and you could see that, anybody could see that. I mean, I think that's the one thing that people talk about when they talk about Chad and Jennifer is how much they loved each other. Um, but he also, you know, loved his kids. And that that is the one thing that, you know, as a father, you look for in a man is how do they treat their kids and how do they love their kids? And so, you know, he, he definitely loved his kids so well and wanted to spend time with them. You know, he had a relationship with Frankie, um, my half brother. And so obviously I, I didn't live with them, um, because I am an married. adult and then yeah. married and have my own children. Yeah. Um, but you know, from, from, what I, I know and I, I spent time with his boys and, um, you know, they, they loved their dad and, and their dad loved them and they had a great relationship. And I know that ultimately Brady wanted to be with, you know, Chad, um, at, with Chad and my mom. I know that ultimately like that, that was what was in the works is that, you know, Brady really wanted to live, um, mainly with his dad. Um, you know, he also has a daughter, mm -hmm. uh, from a previous marriage and he loved her well and, you know fought for her to just, you know, do so well in life. And so he was a great dad. And and I think that he was a great dad and he was a great husband. And so I think those are two of the main things that you can speak to a man about is is how much they love their family. Right. Right. So the day that